I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. I think as a person, Mr. Mellon Bank President, that Judge Khan ruled against us not based on the merits, not based on the law itself and, and what we were privileged to as a law, nor on his discretionary ability uh, to give us an opportunity uh, to at least negotiate the interest. He ruled based on his bedroom practices of homosexuality of which I opposed. And that's where his ruling came from, I believe. His ruling idea, his principle, his discretionary. And the same thing with Judge Arlene P. Bluth. Again, another Judge Arlene P. Bluth ruled against us even when I gave a summary judgment when I didn't have a lawyer. I was without a lawyer. And she gave a ruling to close, to sell our church, to foreclose our church, and I was without a lawyer. She, too, I believe, ruled based on her bedroom practices. She ruled based on her sexual inclinations and preferences rather than the merits of the case or the justice that was due unto us and the discretion that she had. So I want to say to you, Mr. President of the Mellon Bank, you're in trouble. Now, you probably don't know it to the president of the Mellon Bank. You have been put in an extraordinary, precarious, and very dangerous position. Now, you don't know it. Uh, Pharaoh had no idea the position he had been put in uh, during the days of, of Moses and the liberation of the Jews out of Goshen. He had no idea. And there have been a large number of people who have made bad decisions for national interest, having no idea how detrimental this is going to be to you, President of Mellon Bank, all the employees of Mellon Bank, and all the depositors of Mellon Bank as well. Now, generally thinking you would possibly just dismiss this as some sort of religious fanatic, some preacher out there that God doesn't really have anything to do with this. And if he did, he wouldn't favor that preacher and the Atla Church and that breakfast program up in Harlem and that school that educates and sends children, have them accepted at some of the best universities, including Yale, Juilliard, Cadoza Law School, New York Law School, New York University. God's not concerned about them. He's concerned about the billions of dollars that are stored away in your asset management portfolio, most of which is blood money, most of which is money that has been stolen. A lot of it is drug money, and, and you know it. And you would sit there, as most people would do, who are dull to the sense of God and think God is going to protect that drug money, that blood money, that stolen money, that slavery money, that, and not just American slavery, but global slavery, uh, even Chinese money in Chinese slavery or, or where we have slavery in India, a caste system, all that money you are sitting there guarding, most of that money, if not all of it, is ill-gotten, Mr. President of Mellon Bank. And you would be so foolish, along with your employers and support staff, to think that God is going to protect you and that money and that he's going to leave these children up here in Harlem. He's going to leave the breakfast program, the homeless program, the church itself, the ministry. He's going to leave that unprotected and he's going to put his blessings on that blood money, that stolen money that you now manage as assets. If you think that, then you are indeed a damn fool, Mr. President. But I'm sure that's what you think. And you have probably seen religious people come and go. But you've never encountered anybody like me. And the reason why you've never encountered anyone like me, because the circumstances of which God has drawn me out is James David Manning with the namesake of David. David could have said to Goliath, Goliath, you've never encountered anybody like me. You have probably fought soldiers all your life, and you probably won but you've never encountered anybody like me. So Mr. President of the Mellon Bank, let me say this to you. I'm not sure what y'all have done. We have posted our first complaint against you in the New York Times on the 14th of June. We came back a couple of weeks later and reposted our complaint in the New York Times in a full page ad. 
we got money. <laughs> we can, we got we got stuff to fight with. We're not some chicken scratch organization. We understand the power of a full page ad in New York Times. That should have been your first warning to do something. You can't just hope and pray that this is going to go away. You're not dealing with Al Sharpton. You're not dealing with a sellout. You're not dealing with a house Negro. You're dealing with the Lord servant, Mr. President of the Mellon Bank. Now, here's what's going to happen. You have not, I don't know what your plan, but you've gathered together with your elders, your advisors, your enchanters, your lawyers. I don't know if you've done that. And call the board members to say there's a church in Harlem that's being foreclosed for $3.1 million. They got started at a $36,000 lien, of which we have been uh, holding and now pursuing a $3.1 million foreclosure. Maybe you met with your lawyers and your lawyers have told, them, told you this or that or the other, or maybe you haven't given it any concern whatsoever. But you're going to start getting calls from people whose assets you are managing. And they're going to ask you, what's your involvement in this situation? And you're going to try to play it off. I advise you that that is going to be the wrong decision. That's going to be the wrong decision. And I have the potential with my God holding my hand, Mr. President of the Mellon Bank, and the shareholders and those who have assets being managed by the Mellon Bank, because when Mellon Bank goes down, you lose your assets. But I want, you, I want to say something to you, Mr. President of the Mellon Bank. I have the potential, I have the power to bring your bank and your institution, your reputation and all your employees and everything that the Mellon Bank stands for to ashes. I have the ability to do that. Now, you can dismiss that. You can go ahead and think that it ain't, no, it ain't never going to happen. But ask that boy, Jonathan Ross Goldblatt, who is familiar with Hashim. He is familiar with the Tanakh. You ask him. You ask him, is it possible? Is there a remote possibility that James David Manning, leader of the Outlaw World Missionary Church, the Bethelite Community Baptist Church, with his hand in God, can bring you to ashes and that the Mellon Bank can fall down flat like the Jericho Wall. Ask Jonathan Ross Goldblatt. Ask him. If not, ask him of anybody else who attends Kebab or anybody else who's been connected with Jewish blood, anybody else who knows the power of the word of God. What is your future? Well, let me tell you, if you don't ask them, I'll tell you now. Your future is that you need to quickly meet the demands which are long overdue. Dismiss these charges against the beautiful Bethelite Community Baptist Church. Restore to us the now $650,000 that we have spent in legal fees. Call for and assist us, your attorneys that have gone over the case. If you told them, read this case from start to finish from 2009 or from 2004, read all the cases and see how the lawyers have raped us, how they have lied, how they have how they fleeced us just to get money and never gave us the kind of justice. And moreover, that Judge Khan and Judge Blue, in my opinion, rule based on their bedroom and their sexual proclivities rather than justice and the merits of the law. Have them look at that and then decide how that we are now going to your lawyers, the law firm, the lawyers that represent your $50 trillion are going to join with the pastor James David Manning to call for a judicial review of the decisions made by Judge Arlene P. Bluth and Judge Francis Kahn, and that the people who have been ill-treated, that have been biasly judged, prejudiced by their sexual belief or their belief in the Bible, that your lawyers will stand with me to open up that review in the New York State Supreme Court. And then finally, that you are to give $100 million to my favorite charity, which is Mercy Ships, that hurt, helps poor people who have medical conditions that are just born with those medical conditions. $100 million is what we're asking. Those are our four demands. And we say demands because they are, because we can't, we're not begging. We're, we're not here in a compromised position where we have to beg you. You will see. We've already cursed the sidewalk. 
the way Jesus cursed the Pharisees. Jesus cursed the Pharisees, and then he cursed the people who went to church but did not follow the word of God, such as visiting the sick, feeding the hungry, housing the homeless, and clothing the naked. He cursed them into outer darkness. We've already cursed that sidewalk and everybody there. So you have a decision to make, Mr. President of the Mellon Bank. And uh, I would advise you to listen to me. Again, talk to that boy, Jonathan Ross Goldblatt. However, I don't ever want to lay eyes on him or see him because that boy lied to me. Jonathan Ross Goldblatt lied through his teeth to me. I don't have any interaction with him, but you know him. Talk to him and ask him, what does the Tanakh say? What does Hashim say about is it possible that an institution like Mellon Bank can be brought down by a prophet, by a man of God. Ask him and, and, and you get his opinion. Now, a whole lot of people's lives are depending on your decision, Mr. President of the Mellon Bank. And I want to say to the members of the Mellon Bank who perchance may hear this, you need to pray that your president preserves your job and also preserves your life and your health. You could come down with sicknesses, all kinds of unexpected diseases and diagnosis as a result of your oppressing of the children in Harlem, your oppressing of the people, the homeless people that, that, that live in the homeless shelter of the Outlaw World Missionary Bethelite Community Church, that you could be yourselves afflicted by God, that God could bring up a trough of diseases and inflictions upon you and upon your children. The employees, I'm talking now to the employees, bring up a, 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 a boatload of sicknesses and diseases upon you and upon your children to the third and fourth generations, God can curse and you can lose. And the heavens will be iron above you and the, uh, the earth itself will be solid rock and nothing you plant will grow and everything you have will be taken away from you. I suggest to you, you meet our, Mr. President of the Mellon Bank, meet our demands, meet our demands, dismiss these charges against and of this church and then open up an investigation into the fact that what I believe that Judge Bluff made a decision based on her sexual bedroom practices to preserve her sexual bedroom practices. She believed that it would be a good thing to destroy this church and her sexual bedroom practices of woman with woman would be preserved. Not the church, not the homeless shelter, not the school, not the breakfast program, but her sexual bedroom practices. I believe that. I believe that. And the same thing with Judge Francis A. Kahn, that he made a decision based on his sexual bedroom practices to preserve that, to destroy this church, to destroy the children, to destroy the ministry, to destroy Harlem in order to preserve his sexual bedroom practices. I believe that with all my heart, I do. And I just want to say to you that there's a long and a very dark row ahead of you. Release our church and follow the demands. And perchance, God Almighty will show you some mercy. I'm James David Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord's servant. The Mellon Bank to Judge Bluth and to Judge Francis A. Conn III. We shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved, we shall not, we shall not be moved, sing it, we shall not, we shall not be moved, we shall not, we shall not be moved. In the midst of war we fight on, standing on the word of God we stand strong. We shall We're not afraid and ain't backing down. There's a new sheriff here in this town. We shall not, we shall not be moved. You can't try, but you won't succeed. The time is run closer when you will be. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Forgot to have mercy 
on your poor soul You'll find out soon you're not in control We shall not We shall not be moved Singing we shall not We shall not be moved We shall not We shall not be moved Singing we shall not We're gonna tear your kingdom straight down And when we're done, you won't be around We shall not We shall not be moved We shall not be moved. 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 We shall not